Hi, my name is Katie Rietta, and I'm an application specialist with Dermaspark. And today we're going to be talking about cryotherapy. Now, cryotherapy is uh, the gold standard, basically, of lesion removal um, that's available to uh, us today. It is a very safe way of removing lesions such as uh, keratosis, skin tags, hyperpigmentation spots, not diffuse pigmentation and other types of benign lesions. Um, up to now, there's been a variety of ways, methods of uh, lesion removal, and some are released, uh, for instance, would be laser. Although lots of clinics use laser to get rid of um, like moles and um, skin tags, etc. Uh, the problem with anything that burns the skin, especially in lesion removal, is the fact that you create a lot of plume, which the technician and the client will be inhaling. And in some cases, um, if the lesion was viral, for instance, that would not be a very healthy thing. Um, so uh, there's burning of them with laser. There's also electrocoagulation with radio frequency. Uh, that's a very common uh, tool in the marketplace to get rid of a variety of lesions. Um, especially, the, that particular technology is really great for small vascular lesions, um, angiomas, things like that. It really is pretty adequate when it comes to getting rid of skin tags as well. Um, the issue with that is the fact that it's hot, it's burning the tissue and causing necrosis with heat. And the side effect of that is, depending on the skin type, you can end up scarring and burning. And if you're getting rid of a lot of skin tech, especially in the underarm or a sweaty area like that, it's gonna be really uncomfortable for your client. Um, so we represent um, two different devices. One is the freeze and the other with Cryopro. And both of these deal with lesions in a very different way. They use nitrous oxide and which is a gas and it's compressed gas and so you're using it like a pen and you're going to freeze the lesion and what happens um, the recovery of this is quite slow actually but the benefit of that is it usually leaves the, the client in a super comfortable manner and it just sheds over the next couple of weeks and uh, the chances of scarring or any kind of adverse effect is really reduced now, why do we use nitrous oxide? Well, just like there is a variety of ways of getting rid of lesions in the market, there's also a variety of gas type um, technologies to get rid of uh, lesions on the market. Um, for instance, CO2, there's like CO2, something like you would get at Walmart, that they use that for wart removal and things like this. You can buy them commercially even on at, uh, at the store. Um, they operate roughly at about minus 60 degrees Celsius. It could be a little bit more depending on the compression of the tissue. And the temperature you need to cause necrosis or cell death uh, with uh, cryotherapy is roughly the same temperature. It's about minus 60. Well, the problem with CO2 is it's not very strong because you have to hit that sweet spot of minus 60 to cause necrosis and you have um, other um, factors that interfere with that, like ambient temperature and stuff. Uh, a lot of times CO2 just isn't really uh, a great method of treating something that's uh, deep, deeper or a little bit more substantial. So uh, low CO2, is, it's safe, but it's not particularly effective uh, because it's running too close to the actual temperature of um, lesion removal. So we use nitrous oxide and there's another gas on the market called, called nitrogen, liquid nitrogen, which a lot of derms use. Well, the nitrous oxide runs at minus 89, which is beyond, well beyond um, the temperature of necrosis, but it's nowhere near the minus 89 degree, uh, minus 189 or almost 200, minus 200 degrees Celsius that nitrogen is. Nitrogen, if you've ever gone to a dermatologist and had those lesions removed with that, you almost yeah, get a big blister and it's uh, like a, you can end up with a hole and indentation in its tissue because it was overkill. So we use nitrous oxide because it's stronger than CO2, but it's not as aggressive as nitrogen. So it's in that sweet pot spot. It's going to cause necrosis. It's going to create cell death and uh, you're going to have the shedding of the lesion, but it's not going to be super aggressive that you're, it's going to take longer for your body to heal. Um, now, how does it cause, uh, create cell death? It freezes. 
it creates it freezes the water of the tissue which then ruptures the cell and uh it's like frostbite almost in some ways it ruptures the cell and the cell will uh once it thaws out it starts to, your body starts to absorb it it typically looks like dry skin afterwards and it can take two weeks i've even had seen some hyperpigmentation lesions take three weeks to recover uh typically immediately after if i was doing a pigmentation spot you're going to see it almost like ipl it's going to look darker um and if you're doing something like a skin tag or other type of lesion like that it often looks just like a little mosquito bite so that's sort of the after effect of the treatment and that can take uh, a few weeks for it to heal and um, but it's very comfortable, it might be a little itchy in the healing process. Uh, we typically use a occlusive product. We like to use our SOS cream, which you can purchase on your app, your Dermis Drug Store app. Um, it's a smart occlusive product. It's with ceramides, it helps occlude the area. So you're gonna have a really nice healing and uh, really reduce inflammation and any kind of chance of ill effect. So we have two different pens. We have the freeze pen and we have the cryo pro. Uh, they both run on nitrous oxide. Uh, both do a variety of lesions. However, the cryo pro here has a much finer tip and comes with four different tips. The blue tip being the finest. It's really great if you're doing any kind of lesions around the ocular area. And again, if you're doing around the ocular area, you have to be medically directed or a dermatologist. Um, so you have like the extra small tip, which is really good for really small vessels, uh, medium silver tip, large tip, and extra large if you're doing something like planter's warts or if you're a chiropodist and you're working into your clinic uh, that way, you have more uh, functionality with this um, when it comes to lesion size. Because it's finer, you'll see here the average amount of lesions per cartridge is a little bit more. It's 6 to 12 because we don't waste any gas because the tip's finer. So uh, the cryoprobe, you can do get 6 to 12 um, uh, lesions per cartridge. Um, you have a, a greater variety of tips. The tips are autoclavable, by the way. Um, so even though they look like a plastic material, you can put them in for, st uh, for sterilizing and you can autoclave them. Um, the freeze pan only has three tips. Three tips though still gives you a wonderful range for uh, lesion removal. It's great for skin tags, uh, etc. cetera. Um, and because the, the tip size is a little bit bigger, you're gonna be getting four to eight lesions um with this particular device now i'm always cautioning people because when you first get it you need to create uh you know have some skills when you're doing it you waste a lot of gas when you first uh, start using these um just because you're unsure of timing you might just do an extra spray or etc i just found when i was first uh, trained on it i went through a lot of gas immediately but as you progress and you uh, increase your skills you use a significantly lot of gas so a lot of times your uh, four to eight might be uh, six to twelve uh, and the other would increase as well just because you're better at doing your treatments. Uh, so those are our two devices. I am going to show you how to load the device and what to look for um, when you're uh, adding your cartridge to your pen. So I'm gonna load the cryoprobe and I've already let go of all the gas. So it's not gonna have that big combustion pop that you normally get. Normally when my pen is uh, empty, it's not spraying cold anymore. I uh, press this down to release a lot of the compression. So when I'm opening it up, it's not such a scary event uh, because they can sound quite loud when you are, um, they sound quite loud when you uh, um, take the gas out. So here, I see my gas here. I am going to uh, remove it. Always check in here. Uh, sometimes there's a little fil white filament, uh, which is a piece of paper from the filter that gets stuck in there. And if you put another gas container in, it's very hard to spot sometimes um, because it is uh, white and, and a silver background. Um, just always make sure, give it a little tap, look in there, make sure that the area is clean and um, you will be uh, ready to load your pen. So I'm going to get gas and the one of the benefits also with um, the cryoprobe versus the freeze pen is the cryoprobe has this, uh, it can take a 16 gram um, gas cartridge, which is this, or I can put this inside 
and load an eight gram. Why is that convenient? Because if I'm using an eight gram and I'm only doing a couple of lesions and it might be sitting for another week, I don't have to put a whole large gas amount in my pen. So I am going to open this up. I use my tweezers and I'm gonna extract this and I am going to gently place it in the side and that little end is what's going to puncture my gas canister and I'm going to take my gas canister I'm going to place it here and I'm going to place the rest of my pen on and I'm going to just get it nice and tight like this just fingertip tight and I'm going to keep my pen downward um, because if you're going to puncture and break the seal this way, what would happen is you could end up having your gas leak. So I'm going to keep it downward and I'm going to do three really quick little um, circular motions here as fast as I can and you're going to hear a puncture. You hear that pop? Maybe not on screen, but I just broke the seal and my uh, canister is ready to use. Now you have to remove the tip. And you can see how fine the cryoprobe tip is. And it we are ready to go. What I always suggest is before you even treat a person, I get my freeze pen. I've loaded this freeze pen too. It loads the very same as the cryoprobe. And I practice right on the, my catalog. So to do a lesion of this size, you'd be just doing like a nice circular pattern like this to fill in all your colors. And you would, uh, depending on the depth, which you'd have to refer back to your training manual, um, you'd do a three second flow to a, maybe even a 10 second flow, depending on the depth of the lesion that you're treating. So it's always really nice practice just to get good. If I'm doing something fine like that, I'm gonna pull back and you can see I'm, how small my little dot is for this lesion. If I'm doing a larger lesion like this size, I'm gonna do more circular motion to fill it all in. Typically you're doing one pass, allowing it to thaw out for a few seconds and then hitting it again and doing two passes. And of course, in your book, it will show you uh, your th freeze thaw cycles and how many seconds to uh, hold the, 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 pan the gas out uh, depending on the lesion. So here, for instance, small, small lesion, I'm gonna go in and to keep, to keep it on, I'm gonna retract my needle a little bit and I'm just gonna hold it here for like three or four seconds if it was a skin tag, and then I'm gonna let it thaw out, and then I'm gonna hit it again as soon as the, the snow is gone, and I'm gonna do that usually for about two lesion, uh, two uh, treatments, and then I'm done. So if that was on a human, that would be a, a treatment. Uh, if something's a skin tag, often I get a, uh, um, a card or piece of plastic that I've sanitized and I put it underneath the skin tag and I sort of angle it down like this. So any extra gas flow goes on the card, not on my patient. Um, so that way I'm, I'm protecting the healthy skin and just uh, hitting the gas on the lesion itself. So I'm always suggesting go to your training book, not just for the guide on how long to uh, flow your gas, but also to practice. Uh, you, you know, you can, you can practice quite a bit on uh, the lesions available in your book and then pra practice on family, friends and family. I think almost everybody has skin tags to uh, practice on uh, before you start, uh, you know, using this on patients. Um, this uh, little angenoma on the nose, for instance, be very easy to treat like this you're just flowing it and then you're gonna let it stop and then those type of lesions are usually actually a longer flow and if your uh, treatment is unsuccessful it's because you're not holding the gas long enough if they say three seconds count three seconds not one two three it's one two three okay so if they're if it's a lesion that's worth eight seconds that's a long time one two three, four, five, and you're, you're going to be uh, uh, letting your gas flow for that entire time. So don't over treat, uh, especially at the beginning because you can end up causing a blister, etc. I would rather tell the client uh, at the beginning to, or the patient at the beginning to, that you might have to come in for a second treatment for a top up. I usually would time that maybe three to four weeks afterwards. And if there's any residual uh, treatment left uh, or any kind of lesion left, then you can hit it again then. 
For aftercare, you are going to uh, use uh, our SOS cream, which is our Smart Occlusive product. It has um, ceramides in it. It helps heal the skin and create a really nice barrier. Please do not irritate the area by scratching it. Sometimes it gets itchy when it's healing. Um, so please do not do that. Just add a little bit of film uh, morning and night or as needed uh, to create that barrier until it heals. Always make sure that you've alcoholed the area prior to treatment. Make sure it's nice and clean. Make sure it's dry and then go ahead and uh, treat your lesions. That is two lesion removals. Uh, that's gonna get up, you can already see the color picking up already. This will get darker too. They'll flake off in a couple of weeks and no more spots.